Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've listened uh, carefully to the testimony, and um, and I would uh, just want to point out that as we have entered the information age with so much information being available to all uh, for a fee, um, why not allow the law enforcement agencies to purchase uh, specific uh, data uh, for their purposes. I'm speaking along the lines of uh, Representative Issa, who talked about law enforcement just doing, uh, not surveillance, but just doing old-fashioned shoe leather investigatory work, going around asking questions, uh, looking at cameras on a in a, a, a public camera uh, that's mounted on a pole. Uh, those things can happen these days. What I'm interested in uh, is understanding among law enforcement agencies, both local, state, and federal, which law enforcement agencies are the most prolific purchasers of data? Can any of the witnesses uh, inform us of that? Well, it's, it's hard to tell because there's a real lack of transparency, as Elizabeth has been, uh, has been saying, ab around what these contracts entail and who, what, what entities these agencies are contracting with. But I do know, I mean, it's well known that, that ICE is a major, you, d they're developing big um, infrastructure um, that focuses on predictive policing analytics and data brokering analytics. But I do think, I mean, I think if people knew how many um, state and local law enforcement agencies were also using these technologies. They would be shocked. Um, thousands and that's and thousands what I'd of like. To, that's that's what I'd like to know. Yeah. Uh, who who are the agencies, and are they state, local, or federal? And if and can it, can you identify those agencies? So I know. I mean, I know that LexisNexis alone contracts with over thirteen hundred um, local and state. Uh, law enforcement agencies, and I'm not, I'm, a lot of agencies- For what kind of data? For all- What kind all, of data? All, all of the data. It's, they sell data dossiers what, containing- Generally it. speaking, generally speaking, yeah. what kind of data is mostly sought by law enforcement agencies? So they purchase data dossiers that contain over 10,000 types of data from, from 10,000 different sources. It's billions and billions of data points that are everything from your job history, your geolocation data, your um, work history, your, your home address, all your licenses, your voting records. I mean, just everything. And, and more and more, they're also buying predictive policing technologies. So those are algorithms that kind of sift through that data and predict, you know, they, they, they drop heat lists or about who's most likely to commit a crime, where those people are, who their associates are. It's, it's really, really invasive, and I don't think there's a kind of data that me, isn't included. Let me ask you this question. What, what entities or individuals are the prime targets of this data collection by the agencies that are most prolific in collecting that data? I mean, and we don't know who that is, but yeah. tell us what kind of data are they seeking and it, against whom? It tends to disparately impact people who already have a lot of data in criminal record system, which is usually people of color, um, especially black men. Okay, and then so, we're, so, so we're basically talking about uh, local law enforcement agencies uh, developing information uh, on uh, criminal suspects uh, who are... Uh, thought to perhaps have violated state laws? It, uh, yeah, go ahead. If, if I could just jump in on that, the, the, one of the, when you say who is being targeted, I think that one of the main problems is that no one is being targeted, it's a dragnet. So what we are seeing is agencies purchasing uh, entire databases of information so that they can sift through that and decide, you know, maybe they have someone of interest or maybe they are looking to see suspicious patterns so they can decide who they want to learn more about. This is not a situation where they have probable cause that someone has committed a crime and so they are looking for data well, just, that would support just, that. Just proceeding on a reasonable suspicion, a reasonable articulable suspicion, 
so, so let shouldn't me... law enforcement shouldn't sure. law enforcement be able to uh, to deal with data on that basis? It depends on how sensitive the data is. If if the data is, for example, not geolocation, if it's some other form of third party records, then the standard uh, can be relevance, and then they have to show relevance to a court and get what's called a D order. So it's both the, st both the standard they have to meet is important, but also the process that they have to follow. But let me just, when you, when you say reasonable suspicion, the ACLU's documents show that during a three-day period in 2018, for just one piece of the southwestern United States, DHS collected 113,654 location points. The DHS did not have reasonable suspicion for each one of those, for any of them. This was dragnet collection so that DHS could then sift through that data and, and uh, decide what it wanted to do with it. Thank you. I yield back.